Hi, today I would like to share something which is not directly related to the software engineering and technicality. It is more related to the work and work condition. It's something I have learned during last two, three years since COVID and it's really affecting your job. And I'm talking here about the economic conditions and what I learned during those years. It, it's very important topic because it's affecting directly your job and how, it, how the dynamics inside the job. It looks like it's away from you, but it's really something so close. And I will explain that on the video during the video. So since COVID until now, there was a lot of changes in the, in the economy especially on the US where I mostly get my clients and it teach me some some stuff some concepts which I, have, I did not know before and I saw them kind of in action on real fields like how it feel like or how it affect me I will start with something which we all seen during COVID which is the shutdown and during the shutdown in the beginning, U.S. was not supporting the economy. And during the time which they were not supporting the economy, we kind of lost our jobs. There was a lot of cut, cut, cut everywhere, cut for the head. Like a lot of companies are reducing their budget at the start of COVID because everything is shutting down. So what happened is the government start to push money, to give money to people, to banks and so on and that create a lot of jobs so you can easily find a job the, the rates were not that high but they are reasonable but there is job you can find a job and if you land a job you will find that everybody's kind of rushing it's you feel like it's not a stable job it, yeah i got a job but what are we delivering? Why we are rushing to deliver so quick? And everything is under tight timelines. And that rush start to raise slowly, slowly. And then it, it start to accelerate during last year, especially. And then what happened after is we start to slow down. There is no much jobs, but the job, if you find the job, it's become more stable and it's under a reasonable timelines. So when, when you think deep why that dynamic happened and how it affect me. So what happened when the Bush money, when the governments give money and they reduce the interest rate to near the zero or zero. So you find that there is a lot of demand for workers. You find a lot of demand, okay, we want we have a lot of money and we need people to work. So you find a high demand. And I, and in the other side, so you find a lot of expectations. Like right now, if I give Amazon $1 million and I said invest, it's, it's a different discussion. When I give them $1 billion, I tell them invest. So they have high, there is a lot of targets because we have a lot of fund. There is high expectations. I give you a lot of money. I expect a lot from you. And for that, we need to hire more people. So you find a lot of rush to hire people and the rates start to rise. There is, there is usually average price for the, for the workers on the market. Then those average prices are rising because we need more people. We we'll ask, we we'll look for people, but the, the jobs are too much and the supply is less. So there is a, the balance between supply and demand it's not equal. They are, there is, uh, they are unbalanced. Supply and demand are unbalanced. And uh, like when you work, you find if you get a lot of money or the, 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 the salary is high or rates are high, but there is a la rush to deliver. And it's very easy also to find a job to jump from one to another. That's, that's how it affects you and it affects the companies, it affects the dynamics. On the other side, what, what are the consequences? What happened when all that setup happened? This is a setup, like we have money, we give the investors, they invest, 
and uh, they give to uh, the company and then they, ex they expand their work, they ask for more targets. We need people to work, do those targets, and then the people, they are less, so we raise our, the rates to bring more people. But now, when they come, they have very high targets, and there is another job, they jump, jump, jump. A extremely unex like unpredictable situation and a mess. <laughs> when there is no balance, it's a mess. The, the economy is all about balance between supply and demand, and it's a mess. Those are lessons I have learned. Like, you must have a, a, a supply and demand balance for the economy to become stable or near balance. It's not a must like one-to-one -one ratio, but near the one-to-one -one ratio, two-to-one ratio, n not, not that booming, very high demand, very low supply. This is very bad. And the consequences of such setup is inflation. Now you find, okay, I have a high rate, but I go to buy something and it's becoming more expensive. And the prices are rising, rising, rising because the rates are high and high expectations to raise the profit, the companies, uh, because there is a lot of targets. They have a high targets. I want now to raise my, uh, my margin so I can make more profit to pay back for the investors. So it, it, it become uh, the condition, those setups create a condition where we had to raise prices. We have to push to inflation because we give people a lot of money and we, we need a output higher than usual. So what happened when the interest rates rise now? I mean, after like COVID ended, they start to raise the interest rates and the, they pull money from the market because now interest is high. Um, investors think twice, okay, should we invest, before they invest, I mean, should we invest or give to the government or the banks or whatever other investment tools and it will give us an income, fixed income. So this shift make us on a, it was during this year, like quarter one maybe, in a condition where investors are pulling the money from the investments and put it on more secure assets. So they take the money where the investment they bought doesn't make for them more money than those secure assets, bonds maybe, anything have interest rate. Imagine now if I give you interest rate of 5% and your business all and all, it make 1%. Why should I make the business? And definitely business mean operations, lose profit and so on. Shut down the business, move the money to a fixed asset if possible. It will be way far better. And uh, usually what they do is they put the money on a fixed asset. They get the interest and invest with the interest. The, usually that's what happened. So now the market start to have that shift we are selling assets and then we moving the money to fixed income and we take this fixed income to invest back on the market and that's what happened during this rise every every rise cause business to shut down if i rise one percent if i have a business which give me 0.5 i shut down the 0.5 and i move to one percent two percent i shut down move to 2%, unless your business is making money more than the 5% or have a, a projection of high profit, which like make the investor think, okay, if I shut down the business now, I get the 5%, 2% or 3%. And then later when it, the interest rate drop, it's hard to do the setup again for that business. So let me stay in the business. If let's say the interest rate projection is to rise, rise for one year. If I shut down the business and I go invest and I take the interest for one year and I try to open the business again after the year, it will cost me more than if I stay in the business itself. So I, I start to make the calculation. I say, okay, no, let me keep the business. I, it's a hard time. Okay, we pass that hard time and then we can continue the operation. So. Investor always look for money. 
So we think, okay, what is more profitable? What will make more sense? So that's what happened usually. So you find now that shift happen, and then after the shift happen, most probably the businesses start to be stable. The economy start to be stable. Yes, there is interest rates high cause the inflation to drop and the companies they start to lay off reduce the like those projects which have been shut and shut down the projects and so on because they don't make profit when they move the fund now when they take the profit they start another business or they start new projects with the interests and they become more stable because there is a fixed income coming. So, okay, we will get 5%. We put those 5% in this project and until we fund the project until it succeed. And then when the economy shift again, we have a profitable business, which will make for us more than the fixed income we will get. So kind of a setup again, we are making a stable business now with the interest for the period after the interest. It's projecting the future. And that affect all the cycle affect us because when it's booming now, we have a lot of jobs, high rates and so on. Then the, during the shift, you find people don't have job. There are a lot of people laid off, no job. Then when we get back to the stability, then now you find not too much job and the jobs are available. It is mostly one one to one the supply demand for the job is is a kind of stable and there is no rush because we have interest rate there is no rush we are projecting long-term profits and during the shift again is what i'm waiting for because i i haven't passed through such situation when i have that awareness so i'm not sure what will happen after they start to reduce the interest rate. Are we going to go in a boom again? Or we will keep the economy stay stable or we go on a layoff phase? That's something I haven't seen so far. I'm, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen. But th that take me also to something which I have learned, it is called soft landing. What's soft landing? Soft landing is when you see people are not losing the job, or losing the job and getting another job, but with real low rates. So you find you are getting, let's say 100 uh, USD per month, that's your salary. Then you find a job, there is no job, but it's 50 USD, 70 USD. So you lost the third. And then it is like the, the soft landing have a condition that the, the income you have is Sim like similar to what you spend. I mean, it's not it's not more, but it's not less again. So if I spend rent 20, food is 20, 10 is for transportation, utilities, other things. This is my 50. If you get the 50, that's soft landing. If you read up below the 50, now we are in a bad condition because what we gaining the income is less than what I'm supposed to have to continue life. Like I, I can pay for my bills. Definitely booming mean is more than that. I get more, I get money and I get more money to invest or to do something or to go for entertainments and other stuff. So that condition we have is kind of a soft landing. If we get in a recession, we'll get in a situation where we, the income is less than what we should have to manage our bills and maybe you can lose your job you don't have job this will be a recession a condition where very little income or no income at all and you cannot you no longer are able to pay your bills the soft landing is kind of yes you don't have as much but you can manage by the way if the inflation raise it will cause a recession again like right now if i have 100 and then i the goods raise then i need 120. okay it's not because it's not because my condition have changed and i have more needs 
is because the needs I have is need more money. So yeah, so it, it's a cycle we have to go through and I am not sure how it ends. Like I, I am sure, I, mean, I know what is booming now, that when the economy is booming, I receive a lot of offers have high rate like my my rates are high that's understandable a period where there is a shift where you maybe you have been laid off there is no money and you can't find a job the kind of a shift and where there is stability you can find a job the rates are not high but they are enough now when we shift again to booming what's going to happen during that shift is are we going to to see a layoffs and then a lot of jobs available like what happened in covid before covid there was jobs available there was stability and then during covid there was a kind of a small recession somehow before they start to boot money and then we see a booming so um, I haven't completed the cycle yet, but it is very interesting and it makes you understand when money comes, because money is not always available. Jobs are not always available. There is a cycle. There is a cycle. You can search for a job in a period where like we are in a recession or there is no jobs at the moment and then you give up. You think that, okay, I am I'm no longer needed or, or I can't find more job and so on. But that's not the case, it's just the market conditions. During this period, you will have low income, but you'll have more time. If you have more time, you can do learning and other stuff. It's not waste, you still can invest in yourself. If you have more income, you can take the income and invest with your money. So you have time or money. You work too much, you have more money. You work less, you have more time and both can be invested. You can invest in your time, you can invest using your money. So during that cycle, you have to know what to do when, whether it's time to invest with my money or it's time to invest with my time. And is it, is it time to market and look for a job or it is time to just wait until, or be ready until the market start to have demand and then I be ready for the demand. So understanding that cycle will make you know where you are and what to do at the moment. It's very important. It's very important so that you, you don't be frustrated. You don't be depressed. You don't, uh, you don't do something on the wrong time. Like it's a time to work now. There is no need for you to learn or market for yourself or save. Just focus on what you have on hand and make more money. Take the money, invest the money. It's not time to invest on learning, education, or upgrade. It's time to make money, take the money, use it to invest. When it's time for a recession, there is no, the income is low, this is the time you should learn, gain more skills, and do marketing for yourself. So, yeah, you have to, you have to know where are you so that you can know what to do. That's all what I would like to share with you guys. See you in the next video.